What you see on your screen is a 64-bit virtual memory address, and this is how all of its 64 bits are translated into physical memory addresses. Now, this may seem a bit complicated at the first glance, but I'll break it down into individual steps so you can understand them easily. This translation of virtual memory addresses to physical memory addresses is done by a special component of Windows called the Memory Management Unit. This is a four-stage process in which at each stage, some of the bits of the virtual address point to a new table, which can be thought of as a structure, which has entries which also points to the next table, and this process continues until finally the address is translated into physical memory address. The four tables which are involved in this process are page map level 4, page directory pointer table, page directory table, and page table. Each of these tables have 256 entries, and each entry contains a page frame number, or PFN, which points to the start of the next table. If you look closely, you will find out that this is actually the distribution of 48 bits, as in 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 12, and not 64 bits. This is so because all 64 bits are not addressable on a x64 system due to limitations, both from the hardware and software. And in reality, only 48 bits are usable. Let us start by looking at the translation of first 9 bits. First, the leftmost 9 bits act as an offset into the PML4 table. The address of this table is stored in a special register. And at this offset, the entry contains a page frame number, which points to the start of the next table. And then the next 9 bits act as offset, which when added to the PFN, points to the next PFN. The same then happens with the next 9 bits which point to the page directory table, and then finally pointing into the page table. Now what happens after the translation has reached page table is a bit different. The page frame number in this case directly points to the start of the address of the physical memory page, to which this virtual memory address belongs to. As it should be obvious to you, getting the start of the page is not enough to access the required data. Due to this reason, the last 12 bits are used to find the specific byte which was requested. Now we're looking into one more important and interesting aspect of the translation of virtual memory addresses. This is about the information which the page table entry stores. It is important because, as I mentioned earlier, the page table entry directly points to the address of the RAM. This is how it looks, and let me start decoding each of the unknown bits that you see here. The zeroth bit is the valid bit, V. This bit tells whether the page to which this page table entry points to is paged out into the disk or not. If it is paged out, the bit is set to zero, and if it is not, then it is set to one. The next and first bit is the write bit, W. This bit tells whether the page to which this page table entry points to is writable or not. It basically indirectly tells the MMU if a page is read only. If it is writable, the bit is set to one, and if it is read only, then it is set to zero. The second bit is the owner bit, O. This bit tells whether the page to which this page table entry points to is accessible from user mode or not. If it is accessible from user mode, the bit is set to 1, and if it is kernel mode only, then it is set to 0. The next and third bit is the write through bit. To understand this bit, let's first understand what happens when this bit is disabled. Whenever a process write to a memory location when write through is disabled, then the first thing that happens is that instead of the main memory location, where the memory address points to being updated, the cache of that memory gets updated, and the cache is written back to the original memory when there are no memory operations happening on that memory address. And when it is enabled, then there is no cache involved, which removes any need of the cache from this process. So overall, this bit tells whether write operations should be performed immediately or not. The fourth bit is cache disabled. As the name suggests, it simply lets the MMU know whether to cache the page or not. When the bit is set to 1, the page is not cached, and when it is set to 0, the page is allowed to be cached. The fifth bit is accessed. As the name suggests, it simply tells whether the page has been accessed after being created or not. When the bit is set to 1, it means that the page is accessed, and when it is set to 0, the page has not been accessed. The sixth bit is dirty. This bit simply tells whether the page has been written to or not. The seventh bit is large. This bit tells whether the page is a large page or not. When the bit is set to 1, it means that the page is a large page, and when it is set to 0, the page is a normal 4KB page. The 8th bit is global. This bit tells whether the page should be flushed into the translation look aside buffer, or TLB, which is caching mechanism used for pages. When the bit is set to 1, it means that the pages should be flushed, and when it is set to 0, the page should not be flushed. The ninth bit here is the copy on write bit. There is an extra S in the bracket here to denote that it is a software bit, meaning that the MMU does not use this bit. Rather, this bit is used by the operating system to do its tasks. Anyways, this bit tells whether a copy of the page should be created before writing anything to it. 
If this bit is set to 1 and a process tries to write something to the page, then a copy of the page is created and everything is written into that copy and not the original page. If this bit is set to 0, the page can be directly written to. The tenth bit is the prototype bit. This is also a software bit. This bit simply tells the operating system whether to use this page as a template for making other pages. When this bit is set to 1, the operating system basically copies all the properties of this page when it has to create similar pages, instead of setting all those things manually. If the bit is set to 0, then the page is a normal page. The eleventh bit is the write bit. Now this is the write software bit, and this is going to require a bit of an explanation. So consider a normal 4KB page, and according to its properties, it is a writable page. So in reality, when the page is initially created, this write software bit is set to 1, and the write hardware bit is remains unchanged, so it is 0 by default. Now when the first write operation occurs, the MMU checks if the write hardware bit is set or not. If it is not set and a write request has been made, then it raises a page fault exception. Just like all other exceptions, this exception is handled by the operating system's exception handler. This handler then check if the, the software write bit is set, and as we've seen, it is set to 1 in this case. So it also sets the, the hardware write bit to 1 and then continues the write operation. Now you might ask, why all this mess in the first place? Well, it has everything to do with how multiprocessor systems work, which is beyond the scope of this video. The bits from 12 to 47 store the page frame number, which we have talked about already. The bits from 48 to 62 are reserved, meaning that their usage is undocumented by Windows, and it uses it for some internal mechanisms. The last and 63rd bit is the noexecute bit, or the NX bit. You might have already heard about it. This bit tells whether the content of a page can be treated as code, to execute or not. If this bit is set to 1, then a page is not able to execute.